presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. The Mets rode the long ball to a four-run lead entering the bottom of the ninth. Then the Indians fought back to get within a run before falling short in the end. Today they will encounter the Dark Knight. Mets opening day starter Matt Harvey in the shadows of progressive field. Josh Tomlin makes his long awaited season debut next on Sports Time Ohio. Absolutely gorgeous, picture-perfect day in downtown Cleveland, Progressive Field, where this afternoon the Cleveland Indians take on the defending National League champion, New York Mets, game two of their three-game series. Yesterday, Jason Kipnis tried to jumpstart the Tribes offense. He had three hits in the ballgame, a couple of doubles, but unfortunately, Yoannis Cespedes also had three hits, and one of his left the yard for a big home run as New York took round one of this three-game series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Not surprising that Yoannis Cespedes was in the middle of New York's offensive outburst last night. Remember, they came in a major league worst 194 team batting average, but Cespedes has always swung the bat well against the Indians. Well, they had two home runs as a team. They hit four last night, and Cespedes hit the big one to give them a four to one lead to right center field on a breaking ball. He's always hit well against the Tribe, and since he's been a New York Met, he has done a lot of damage to other teams. He had three hits last night, a triple shy of the cycle, and when you look at 66 games played with the Mets. They, their record 40 and 26. He has 19 homers, 38 extra base hits. He's done a number. So that's the guy you do not want to beat you. If you have to, walk him, let Duda or somebody else in the lineup beat you. Cespedes has hit in nine straight against Cleveland and has 25 career hits here at Progressive Field in 18 games played. Let's take a look at today's pitching matchup for the Indians. Josh Tomlin, you talk about having to wait around 17 days rest since his last start. And we're going back to spring training. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing you're going to have to watch for Josh today is command because that's what he's all about. Feel, he's got to keep the ball out of the middle of the plate because if he stays middle of the plate, a lot of times you can give up the long ball. They hit four yesterday, so hopefully, you know, in his career, he's been very good in interleague play, five and two, but he's going to be matched up against a tough customer. Matt Harvey, the 27 year older, although he's off to a slow start this year, 0 and 2. I'll tell you what, this guy has nasty stuff a good slider, a nice changeup, an explosive fastball. He has never faced the Indians before, but he's looking to get on the winning track for the Mets and try and get them three in a row. You know, when it comes into the win column, he felt like he turned the corner in that last start against Philadelphia. At one point, he did retire 10 batters in a row. We'll be back with today's first pitch between the Indians and the New York Mets, and we'll check in with Andre Knott when we come back. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
Last night it was the New York Mets that ran out to the big early lead and held on for dear life at the end to get the win in game one of the series. We'll see if the Indians can turn the tables on them here this afternoon. Before we get underway, let's go down to Andre Nadu who has the story of a couple of guys who are going against each other who grew up not far apart. No, we're talking about Rajay Davis and Matt Harvey, the starting pitcher for the New York Mets. Now, there's an eight-year age difference between the two players. Obviously, Davis is a little bit older than Harvey, but both grew up in Connecticut, went to neighboring high schools. Rajay told me this morning, he says he's been excited about this matchup for a very long time. They played on the same AAU teams when they were younger. Rajay even gave some money to his team. He says, look, I'm going to eliminate most of his pitches, and I'm just going to try to hit the fastball. But he goes, I know all of Connecticut is watching, and i got to represent for the old guys. So it should be a very interesting matchup for two guys from Connecticut. Always fun to face your homies. You know, whether you played against them or not, it's always good to compete from people back home. You have homies? Yes, we have homies. I used to. Well, Terry Francona and his club comes in four and four on the year, one and two here at home, while the New York Mets under Terry Collins, a game below 500. They've won back-to-back -back games, and they are two and one away from home so far on the year. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Mets under Terry Collins. It'll be Curtis Granderson leading things off. David Wright in the two hole. Michael Conforto, who homered last night, will bat third. Yoannis Cespedes in the cleanup spot. Lucas Duda batting fifth. Neil Walker, switch hitting second baseman, will hit sixth. As Dribble Cabrera, the former Indian, batting seventh. Travis Darno will catch in bat eight. And Alejandro Deaza will bat ninth. Well, usually Josh Tomlin, he's out there. He's raring to go and ready to go. He's usually done probably five minutes before the anthem comes. But today, his first start in 17 games, and he's getting ready to toe the rubber, and we'll see how he does. Tomlin's last start was on March 29th. Back in Goodyear, Arizona, it was against the Seattle Mariners. He pitched well. He pitched deep into the game, actually ended up with the victory. But because of the rain, because of the early season schedule, he's had to wait a long time. But for Josh Tomlin, he's the one guy that you don't worry about in this situation. There are some pitchers, a lot of pitchers, who really lean on the regularity of the schedule, the routine. Tomlin, throughout his career, minor leagues, big leagues, doesn't matter. He just wants to pitch, just wants to put the uniform on, go out and play. So as Tomlin gets ready, we'll take a look at his numbers. He went seven and two last year with a 302 earned run average. Just turned in a remarkable performance given everything that he's overcome. Josh is our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher. And you're right, seven out of his 10 starts, he went six or more innings. I mean, he had a great September. He was three and one in that month. Uh, he pitched very well here in this ballpark, four and one on the year in five starts, a 265 earned run average. He was very tough on left handed hitters last year. Lefties hit just 156 off him. He, he did a nice job with runners on base and runners in scoring position. So you just hope he can get through that first inning and let him settle in because you're concerned, even though he did pitch a simulated game in Tuesday in Tampa. You know, to, to some of the Indians hitters, it's just not quite the same when you're going in a big league ball game. So hopefully his command will be there for him because for Josh, you want him to stay away from the middle of the plate. And he has such good off speed stuff. We'll see how he has a feel for it today. Let's check the defense for you. Brought to you by Jeep that is behind Josh. It'll be Ramirez in left field. Nate went at center, Davis in right today. Uribe at third, Lindor at short. Kipnis is at second, Santana at first, and Gomes catching. Dan Isania has the plate this afternoon. Bob Davidson, veteran umpire at first base. Lance Barrett at second. The crew chief, Dale Scott, down at third. We are ready to go. Bathed in sunshine in downtown Cleveland here this afternoon. Wind, though, is coming in off the lake out of the north, so that's going to keep it rather chilly. Well, a little stronger than it was yesterday or last night. And it will knock fly balls down, hit to right and right center. Here we go as Tomlin fires and the first pitch is a little low ball one. Fifty four degrees officially our game time temperature. Brandon 
Anderson jumps on the 2 0 pitch and drives it to deep right field. Davis looking up and it's gone. Curtis Granderson starts the game with a solo home run and the Mets homer binge continues in Cleveland. Yeah, they had a first inning home run last night from Conforto and Curtis Granderson gets his first of the year. This let's look at the location. You can see it's a belt high fastball down the middle that wind tried to keep it in. It's just over the glove of Davis in right field and that ball was it much better than that. That wind knocked it down a little bit. But the Mets will play from in front, so they get their fifth home run in the series. Boy, Davis wasn't much more than a foot away from right. robbing that ball from Granderson. Now David Wright, he swings and foul tips it into the glove of Gomes for strike one. Boy, that'll wake you up in a hurry if you're Josh Tomlin. A little bit low. That wind kept uh, pushing it down, knocking it down. Davis goes up. He was trying to snatch it back. Could not do it. A little upset with himself. Maybe he ran into when he jumped. He might have jumped into the wall and stopped him from really getting up over. Strike three call. David Wright is out number one. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Keep them in the park. Well, uh, should have used that before the game, <laughs> before the first hitter. And hit with runners in scoring position for the Indians. They left a lot of scoring chances out there early and through the middle innings last night. Well for Josh last year he gave up 13 home runs 11 of those 13 were solo home runs so you know what a lot of times if, if he's aggressive he throws a lot of strikes Cody Anderson the same way they don't walk anybody so if you're around the plate you will give up probably more home runs than, than most pitchers but if they're solo they don't hurt you as much it would stand to reason when you're facing a guy like Matt Harvey you want to avoid the big inning. you might give up a home run here or there and be OK. You, you don't want to give that guy though a three four run cushion to work with screaming in from right field Rajay Davis makes a sliding kick for out number two. Well as of right now if you're an outfielder I would cheat in a few steps and make him hit the ball over your head. He had to, he's been tested boy in the first three hitters one over his head now he has to sprint in. And make the catch from Conforto. He does a nice job on the backhand side. He's been everywhere. He's played left. He's started in center. He's starting in right today. So he can play all three and do a, a decent job. Nice play. Now Yoenis Cespedes. Three for five, a triple shy of the cycle last night. Both he and Alejandro Deaza had a single double and a homer last night. This was the key guy, though, for the Mets after they traded for him last year. At the end of the season, he became a free agent. They signed him to a three year deal. But he can get out with an opt out after one, can he? I mean, it was a strange contract he signed. I think it was a three year, 75 million, but he makes 27 this year and he has an opportunity to leave after this year as well. Wait, did you say 27? He's making 27 million this year? Uh huh. Well, they wanted him back. I mean, uh, you know, once they they traded for him, they took off. He gave them the spark they needed. They got to the World Series. Swing and a miss. Tomlin strikes him out. And after the Granderson leadoff homer, Tomlin goes one, two, three. But the Mets will play from in front. The Indians are coming to bat.
on up this afternoon presented by Progressive. Rajay Davis will lead it off. Jason Kipnis who had three hits including two doubles. Last night will bat second. Francisco Lindor hitting third. Mike Napoli, Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes occupy the middle third. Then it's Jose Ramirez, Juan Uribe, and Tyler Naquin batting ninth. And today's Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher is going to be Matt Harvey for the Mets. He's 0-2 this year in his first two starts. 11 and two-thirds innings. Giving up one home run, but opponents hitting 326 off him. First time he's pitched against the Indians in his career, but in interleague play, he's got a brilliant 127 ERA. First pitch is a strike to Rajay Davis. And we don't have to wait long for the meeting of homies here. Just a bit outside one and one. Harvey graduated from Fitch Senior High School in Connecticut. Strikes out Davis, and there's one gone on the first. Let's check out that Mets defense behind Harvey. It's the same as yesterday. It'd be Conforto and left. Diaz in center, Granderson in right. Right is at third, Cabrera at short, Walker is at second, Duda at first, Darno is behind the plate. Jason Kipnis looks at a low fastball for a strike. During his senior year in high school, Matt Harvey struck out 112 batters in 54 innings. Nice curveball there. And for that, he was named the player of the year for Connecticut. Went to North Carolina. Passed up an opportunity to play for the Angels when they drafted him in the third round. Strikes out Kipnis with a high fastball. Back-to-back yeah. -back K's to start the afternoon. Elevated that fastball. And I'll tell you what, with a 4 o'clock start, it's not going to get much easier because I can see the shadow starting to uh, creep in a little bit. But you can see it's above the belt, tough to catch up to. There you'll see it from behind. We saw it from in front. It, it's not easy any way you look at it. So two up, two down on the strikeout pitch from Harvey. Francisco Lindor and he's quickly in the hole 0 and 2. Eight out of nine strikes for Harvey. Now two strike pitch. Ooh. Strikes out the side to start the afternoon. And the Mets lead it one to nothing after an inning.
Start of the second inning. And for the Mets, five, six, and seven do up in their order. Lucas Duda will lead it off. And a fastball in there for strike one. Thirty one year old Josh Tomlin from Tyler Texas. And we take a look at our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Yeah, multi home run games he's there with Delgado and Kingman and some of the big names with the Mets. Frank Thomas the old Frank Thomas not the one you may be thinking about Bobby Bonilla five times. But this is the guy right now, and he may have some power, and he may get hot. But this is the guy I would make beat you in your pitching assessment is in front of him. Diving stop by Lindor. And from the outfield, Grass throws him out. Well done. Nice play. Diving to his left. They, uh, they overshift on him, Granderson and Walker, the three left-handers in the lineup. And it certainly pays dividends right here because it looked like it was into right field for a base hit. And Lindor makes a diving stop in the grass, popped up quickly, and throws him out for out number one. And that will bring up Neil Walker. Whether or not the 17 day layoff hinders Josh Thomas ability to go out and pitch effectively here today you know that he won't use it as an excuse not his style balls ripped the first and a great backhanded stab by Napoli and there are two down here in the first or uh, second inning on back to back terrific plays by the Indians defense well the one thing you do when you're a defender behind Josh Thomas you're ready on every pitch because he's around the strike zone he throws a lot of strikes. So you've got two beautiful plays here to start the second inning. Napoli has shown he can, he's a very good defensive first baseman in the early going of this year. Nice play, easy flip. Gonna bring up his dribble Cabrera. He takes outside for ball one. Cabrera doubled in the ball game last night, lost an RBI on a replay challenge by the Indians. <laughs> Slaps it the other way, and Cabrera has a base hit. Cabrera looks good at the dish in the first two games of this series. He stays back on this, knowing that you know Tom is going to try and get him, and he just shot it the other way. That's really terrific at bat. Taking it the other way, you stay on uh, his fastball, and you sort of force him to beat you inside right there when you can slap it the other way. Second hit now for the Mets. Two out single for Cabrera. Up comes Travis Darno, the Mets catcher, off to a slow start to the campaign. Two for 23 at the plate. Fouls and out of play. Dribble Cabrera should know as well as anyone. Tomlin does a tremendous job with the running game. Out of play to the right. Not that Cabrera is a, a base stealer, but you do wonder if 
playing behind Tomlin for a number of years if he picked up anything. I would love to see him try to steal. Because with the with Gomes behind the plate the quick release and the job that Tomlin does holding runners on. I don't think he has much of a chance. Because he pays attention to you he keeps you close. He'll throw over there a number of times. Not only guys don't even try to uh, uh, to steal off of him anymore. The center field and that's going to get down for a hit. And on his way to third goes Cabrera going into second base is Darno and he beats the tag. Boy, that was aggressive base running by Darno. As he he gets into scoring position, the throw went towards Lindor, who was set up going towards third base. There's two outs. He cuts it off because the ball jumped. He's got to throw it to second base. Although that, that's a cutoff, man. But you know, you've got to be heads up of that guy getting to second base. He gets it in as quickly as possible, but it short hops Lindor, and that is aggressive base running right there. Darno gets himself into second base, so I, I would imagine it's a double. Got to be. Here's Alejandro Deaza. Three for four last night with a double and a home run. That uh, double by Darno was on an 0-2 pitch. Strike to the outside corner. Tama deals. And Diaz checks on a close pitch. And it's one and one. Cabrera had the two out opposite field single. Now he's standing at third after the double by Darno. Chase the curveball. Gomes will have to flip it to first. He does, and the inning is over. Tomlin gets his third strikeout on the Mets strand a pair in scoring position.
Baseball is live with the MLB.com at bat app. You can stay connected all season long with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Matt Harvey looked like his old self in the first inning. Struck out the side. First pitch to Mike Napoli is outside 1 0. After the Mets made Matt Harvey the seventh overall pick in the 2010 draft, they didn't have to wait long for him to get to the big leagues. Two years later, he pitched 10 games for the Mets, went 3 and 5 with a 273 ERA. And then the following year in 26 starts he was nine and five with a 227 ERA and all of a sudden New York realized they had something special but then disaster Tommy John surgery which wiped out the entire 2014 campaign. Yeah, well, it gets a lot of pitchers doesn't it but he came back Rick Boy, last yeah. year did he come back 29 starts that's the big thing he made all 29 starts 13 and 8. But a 271 ERA. That's Had, a uh, comeback player of the year. Yeah, 188 punch outs in 189 innings. Well, it's just a matter, it takes time when you're the, supposedly the ace of the staff, but they didn't realize they have a couple other guys there too, you know, that can uh, step right behind Harvey. Syndergaard, Syndergaard DeGrom. DeGrom. This young left hander we're going to see tomorrow. Steven Matz is, uh, you know, has a great arm. He's from the left side. Yeah, his first year, they were telling him as the next Tom Seaver. That's tough to live yeah, up to. I mean, come on. Well, but you know how the game is. <laughs> know. You know how fans are and, and how New York scouts especially. are. And, yeah, the, I mean, the fans in New York, and you see it, and the guy comes out, and he's throwing in the mid-90s. He's got a slider or a curveball. and I mean, that's just the pressure that's put on a lot of athletes nowadays. Undue pressure, I, I might add. He's always the next. Chopped right at the shortstop, Cabrera. And as Dribble throws out Napoli one down. Today's injury report is brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. And a couple of Tampa Bay Rays collided last night. Logan Forsythe yeah. and Kevin Kiermeyer both listed as day to day. Hopefully, did you see right. it at all? Did yeah. You see the collision? It didn't, didn't look, look real good. No, I know, but I, I think fortunately they're not seriously hurt. At least I hope not. Here's Carlos Santana, and he looks. It's called a strike. Santana thinking that was low. He's going to try to beat the shift with a bunt, but pulls it back as Dribble Cabrera was playing deep at shortstop with no third baseman. The third baseman writes over on the right side of the infield. Santana swings and sends a lazy yeah, pop not, to center. Not in the wind today. You're going to have to really drive a ball to get it out of here today. And with two away, Jan Gomes will be the better. Bouncing ball to short, routine play. Low throw dug out by Duda. 
and the Indians go in order. We play two, it's New York one, Cleveland nothing. Profile brought to you by Levin Furniture and Josh Tomlin after an Indians loss last year six times took the hill. Nice. And went six and oh with a 250 ERA. Yeah you can't do any better than that. You'd like to see him do that again with a loss last night. Keep it right there. That's a nice I like that number. Curtis Granderson leading off for the second time today. He had a 2-0 pitch for a home run in the first inning. the time being the light pole shadow has Josh Tomlin completely in the shade. Brandishing cuts and misses it's two and two. So the ball comes out of his hands kind of dark and then all of a sudden yeah, yeah. it burst into the sunlight. That's the four o'clock starts early and late here. And then just before home plate there's another shadow path. You know, I think that's, that shadows are like that in almost every ballpark when you start the games at four o'clock. Sure, you know what I, I mean? would think so. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much the same no matter where you go. It's not easy to see. Kipnis from the outfield grass with that shift on takes care of Granderson one away. Well, 2016 season tickets are still available. They include uh, eight different plans and. When you buy a prorated 20 game plan, you'll get up to 12 games for free. Just visit Indians.com season tickets for more details. Now Tomlin goes to work on David Wright, who was called out on strikes his first time up. Just missed in off the plate. We were talking yesterday about David Wright being the captain of this team. He made his 12th opening day start this year for the Mets, and that's the most in team history. He was tied with Tom Seaver, and if you remember shortstop Bud Harrelson, who had 11 starts as Mets. Pops that up foul. Right out of play. And 
they certainly are going to need him in that lineup for the most part every day here, even though he does have the, some back issues. Just missed low, three and one. This one off isn't playable. Gomes over. Now with the win, it's going to push that out of play into the seats. And a full count. Well, a lot of Mets fans uh, at the ballpark as well. So I'm driving in on 90 coming up from upstate New York today. Two. Did he go? They appeal. Goodbye. Bob Davidson punches him out. Strikeout number four for Josh Tomlin. And there are two down in the inning. Yeah, it, it certainly looked like uh, like he went. Let's check it out and make this our Circle K strikeout. It's a high, looked like cutter, but he didn't hold up. There's the side view. Good angle right there, and I think he knew it. He was hoping he would get a call, but not today. Foul. Nice backhand stab there. Now, in the Buffalo Niagara Falls area, would would it be a a pocket uh, for the Mets? Yankees, but more Yankees. But when we left Buffalo, the Mets moved their Triple A team in there, so I'm sure they uh, helped grow. Uh, yeah, because they got to know a lot of the young players moving up. So I would say it's split, but oh, in the good. corner, that's extra bases. Davis will dig it out, but Michael Conforto has a two out double. I would still say predominantly Yankees, but. And the uh, Mets, of course, moved to Triple A farm, but they're now in Las Vegas. Yeah. All right, let's go down to Andre. You know, uh, talking about Michael Conforto, yesterday before the game, Terry Collins moved him into the three hole, and he was asked, why would he do that? You know, the New York media has been all over him about their offense. He goes, well, it worked in the World Series. Why wouldn't it work now? Today in the New York papers, he looks like a genius after the home run last night yeah. and another hit today. It just tells you a couple hits can change how the media and everyone else looks at you when you're the manager of a team in New York. Well, that's a tough, tough town to work in. If you start paying attention to the media, they'll run you out of town. Well, we'll talk more about the New York media when Matt Harvey comes back out the pitch because what they did to him is. I don't know. I don't want to get started. Let's wait. Here's Joanna Cespedes. <laughs> okay. Who struck out his first time up. Pops one right back to us. Just below. A little short. You had a good jump on that one. I will. I will <laughs> give you that. We will get one in this new booth so? this year. Absolutely. No doubt because we're off center, you know, and and it's going to be off the right-hander's bat too. Joanna Cespedes with an 0 1 count. Mets have made a lot of noise already in the series with two outs. Threw it by him, it's 0 and 2. They had back to back two out hits in the second inning. Now the two out double here in the third by Conforto, so 9 for 21 with two outs. In the series. The 0 2 is a little low and away.
right back to the screen. See how Josh is when he comes at him with his fastball, he's elevating it, knowing that he's a good low ball hitter. And last night, Cody Anderson tried to get him with a curveball, but he maybe left it up a little bit. And Cespedes is a good low ball hitter, and he, he shot him to right center field for the two run home run. He's really a good low ball hitter. He takes a great swing at that pitch up upstairs, but it's tough to catch up to for him. Pops this back and into the crowd. One nothing Mets were in the third. Runner at second base with two down. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball. And Gomes will throw it to first to end the inning. Five strikeouts now for Josh Tomlin. One to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Knight. <laughs> Jose Ramirez leading off takes a strike. Just outside. So far to this point, it's been six up, six down for Harvey, and 19 of his 25 pitches for strikes. Drive to right field, but right at Curtis Granderson, one away. So by now you may have heard, maybe you haven't, but towards the end of spring training, Matt Harvey missed a, a small amount of time. There was some. They didn't come right out and say, but he had a medical issue that they had to get had to take care of, and then he came to the clubhouse the next day and met with reporters and told him that he had a blood clot in his bladder that had to be uh, taken care of. Popped up, foul ground. First baseman Lucas Duda will make the catch two down. And in being just forthright and 
you know, talking to the media, he said, I, you know, the doctors believed it was caused because he wasn't going to the restroom enough. He was holding it in too long. And they think that's what caused the clot. And, you know, so, I don't know. It's maybe it's maybe just something about the New York tabloids. They took that and ran with it and sort of poked fun at his condition with the headlines. And, hey, guess what? He didn't like it. He was upset about it. So he didn't talk to the media for about a week to 10 days. Yeah, and then they got upset. And then they then they took more shots at him. Well, then he should like, talk to him the rest of the year. See if they like it. Like you were saying before, though, it bring, the point is, you can't win. Yeah, it's, it's a just, tough place to, to play. Yeah, I mean, you could be spectacular and do everything right, and you can still lose. So, you know, he can very politely just say, I choose not to talk to you guys if he wants. In comes De Atza, and boy, I tell you what, Matt Harvey. Looking very sharp here today. Nine up, nine down. Through three, one nothing, New York. New York, top of the fourth inning. For the Mets, Lucas Duda, Neil Walker, and his Drupal Cabrera. Josh Tomlin must feel like he could barely catch his breath yeah, before I know. he's had to go right back out there in but this game. That's okay for him. You know what? Maybe keep him in a rhythm. You know, let him go out there. He's starting to find that zone. Uh, Josh has five strikeouts, hasn't walked anybody. It's just that uh, Harvey's innings have been, it seems like, much quicker. Lucas Duda hit the ball hard his first time up, but Francisco Lindor with that shift on made a nice diving stop and then threw him out on the right side of the infield. Tomlin finds the outside part of the zone to even the count. Duda was a seventh round pick of the Mets back in 07. Sends a sky high, popped to center. Naquin, who was in, playing shallow, has to come in even further to make the catch. No way. The $13 district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio is back. Hey, who's your first drink? All you got to do is get some friends, catch the game from the corner or the new drink rails in left field. District tickets are available only online at indians.com slash district tickets. Here is Neil Walker.
whole story there, but you have to believe that the Pirates were maybe just kind of desperate for a starting pitcher, a left-handed starter. Well, I don't think they wanted to pay Walker what he felt he was worth. Or was it money? Yeah. You, you think that's that was a, yeah, that from what I heard, that's what it was. I mean, I mean he's born know, and raised in Pittsburgh. That's lifelong right. He Pirates didn't want to leave. Yeah. You know, he didn't want to leave, but he wanted to, you know, to be treated fairly. And that didn't happen. So, you know, he had to move on. And sometimes that happens in the game. You know, you want to talk about hometown discount and things like that, but he did everything he had to do in Pittsburgh. And he was a he was a really good player for him fit into that organization very well and it tells you something about the depth that the Mets have in the pitching department that they could trade a guy like Nice and you, you hope that's one of those trades that works out both well, well for both teams. because Murphy ended up signing he left New York and went to sign with Washington catch made in left field Neil Walker retired two down Well, as Dribble Cabrera had an opposite field single his first time up. One pitch down low. And as Dribble Cabrera taking all the way in there for a strike. That one with the first Napoli with a good backhanded stab and feeds Tomlin at the bag and the Mets go one two three for the first time today. Purchase of an adult ticket. They are located in the family deck out here at Progressive Field and are only available at Indians.com slash kids tickets.
You know that old saying, ask and ye shall receive? Yes. Sometimes you don't even have to ask around here. <laughs> Tommy Bo tells us that Matt Harvey's been on the mound for four minutes in the first inning, five minutes in the second inning, and four minutes in the third inning. Wow. So Josh That's Tomlin has, had, has not had a lot of time in the dugout. No doubt. Tommy, we'll have to give you a water for that one. Give him a credit. <laughs> Your count, your count has been Go credited. ahead, you get one slash. <laughs> Davis out front pulls it foul. Matt Harvey started the game by striking out Rajay Davis, Jason Kipnis, and Francisco Lindor. Yeah, he didn't mess around. And then he got uh, ground ball, fly ball, ground ball in the second inning. Nice change. And then all three out recorded ball. in the air in the third inning. Here's the one two. And a high fastball. He tried to get on it. So far in Harvey's first two starts. First time through but between Kansas City and Philadelphia, they were hitting 250. The second time Harvey settled in, there was 188. But the third time they've been able to get him. They were seven for 11. But right now, the Indians looking for their first hit. Our great clip of the game from last night, Jason Kipnis, who had a three-hit performance. A couple of doubles. Came into today batting 310 with four runs driven in. Pulls it on the ground and ground ball out, two away. Up the middle, cut off by his dribble Cabrera, and he throws out his counterpart to end the inning. 12 up, 12 down for Matt Harvey in the Mets. It remains a 1 0 New York lead.
Baseball is brought to you by Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. By the Cleveland Clinic. Access anytime, anywhere. And by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. New York leads it one to nothing as we roll on to the fifth inning. Josh Tomlin will face Travis Darno and then Alejandro Deaza. Darno shallow left. In comes Ramirez to grab it. One away. Last inning was Josh's first one, two, three inning. But he's settling in and he's had nice uh, command today as well. 66 pitches, 43 of them strikes. Napoli takes it himself. And there are two down here in the fifth inning. In-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. On a 2-0 pitch, Curtis Granderson started the game with a home run just beyond the reach of a leaping Rajay Davis. Just cleared the fence. His 36th career leadoff home run. And that's been it. Yeah, that's true. The Mets have had three hits after that, but no damage. The Indians, no hits to this point. So it's been a quiet game, the leadoff hitter, and that's about it. Third ball, but Granderson lays off. This is the guy they were tracking last year. Never really swung at any first pitches. He makes you work. Makes you get in the zone, so it doesn't surprise me that 2 0 pitch he, he was able to get after. Turns on that fastball. Might have been a cutter. Tom, 12 and 19, first pitch strikes this afternoon. And that's been his style ever since coming up, the kind of pitcher he is. He's, Normally just pounds the strike zone. Usually 65. Which most of the Indians pitchers, I gotta say, are, are pretty much the same way. They all throw between 60 and 65 to 67 percent strikes. I think a lot of the strikeouts come when they they get aggressive, they get ahead in the count, they expand the strike zone. Well, they had so many strikeouts last year with 1,400. Back out of play. Well, Granderson with pretty good patience. He, he was just about ready to pull the trigger and then was able to hold himself. Yeah, down. he's got a very good eye up there. He knows the strike zone very well. They up pitch. Strike three called as Tomlin paints the outside corner with a perfect pitch. He gets his sixth strikeout of the afternoon. It remains a 1 0 Mets lead.
but so far Matt Harvey has been just overpowering for the Indians. Mike Napoli going to lead it off. Well he's got he struck out the side of the first that set the tempo and then he has eight outs on three pitches or less. So it's two you know he had a couple of those strikeouts on three pitches. He didn't mess around. This is going to be his 40th pitch of the yeah. game and we're in the fifth inning. I know. That's rare that you see that anymore. Napoli goes wailing away and it's an off speed pitch. Quickly 0 and 2 the count. Well there you go 10 13 a 7 pitch in 4. Yeah an 8 pitch inning in the 4th that's. And this is a guy that can strike you out and I, I, I can see the Indians hitters they got to try and get up there and not let him get to two strikes. A lot of weapons to put you away. Well, we saw a veteran do it a little differently last night at Bartolo Colon. Grounder towards third. Off balance throw by David Wright on the money. One away. But Matt Harvey is, you know, he's mixed his pitches very well. He's thrown some change ups, good high fastballs. He's had a good slider. He had a curveball out there. And it's like everything has been a strike. Pounded the zone. There's a two seam fastball, a slider. A lot of ground balls. Carlos Santana fly to center is only time up. Fastball missed Great, just Carlos. inside. That's called a strike fastball. It's in there, it's three and one. This is borderline, but yeah, borderline. Eh? There it is. The Indians have their first base runner of the game. It will bring up Jan Gomes, who grounded out his only time up in the second inning. Conforto and Diaz in the center fielder calls him off and makes the catch two away. April in Ohio continues tomorrow afternoon right here when the tribe wraps up this series with the Mets. Alan Jensen will lead it off at 1230. We'll have the first pitch at one right here on Sports Time Ohio. April in the OH presented by Meyer. Two down for Jose Ramirez. Tana takes off the throw down nowhere near the bag but backing it up in center field is Deaza but Santana now in scoring position with his first steal of the year. Uh, I like that because you know they do not think he's going to run you know you go you can go over him when he's on base all all the time you want and they're not going to say hey keep your eye on Santana stealing and it's two outs nobody on get yourself in scoring position now base hit can tie the game I love it. And Jose Ramirez has that short swing. Oh. 
But now he's in the hole in two. He's going to have to stay short here. You're down to one strike. Didn't miss by much. One ball, two strikes. He was not going to give him any swinging room. Maybe just a little in off the plate. Not much. That was a really good 0-2 pitch. To deep center field. The Yazid with his back to home plate won't get it. And a one hop the wall. Santana scores the tying run. Ramirez in the second with a two out RBI double. Again, I go back to what Terry Francona said about Ramirez in spring training when he was hitting all those home runs. He said, you know, people don't realize how strong this guy is. Well, he was down in the count, and he got a ball down with that, that he was able to handle. And you can see how the wind had messed with Deaza. He thought it was going to come back, and it goes over his head the other way. But uh, he smoked that ball after being down in the count 0-2. So the walk. Really hurts Harvey and the Indians tie the game with their first hit. And a nice block at home plate by Travis Darno. For Jose Ramirez, all three of his RBIs have come with two outs this year. He has been Clutch performer so far. Especially for a guy that, you know, when the season began, you weren't really thinking of him as an everyday player, but that's exactly what he's been. He's just moved around in some instances. Never really played much outfield, but he's been primarily an outfielder so far this year in Michael Brantley's absence. Well, that's what I was thinking. You need Michael Brantley back. Line Uribe. He lines it in the left field of a hit. Conforto cuts it off, but he won't get Ramirez. He scores, and the Indians take the lead. Uribe delivers the two-out RBI single to left. And just like that, the Indians, who didn't have a base runner before this inning, have back-to-back two-out RBI hits here in the fifth. And Uribe picked on a low fastball from Harvey and uh, the two out clutch hitting those those are the hits you need as an offense it really picks you up and when you can get one of them it takes a lot of the pressure off the other guys so after the walk and a stolen base a big hit by Ramirez your rebate comes back a two out lightning here and it's two to one try Tyler Naquin takes a strike he flied out the center his only time up. Swings through it and it's 0 and 2. <laughs> Matt Harvey retired the first 13 in a row to start the game before Carlos Santana walked, then stole second. And came home on the two out RBI double by Jose Ramirez. And then Uribe plated Ramirez with a base hit in the left field. down on strikes to end the inning. But quite a turn of events for the Tribe here in the fifth. A pair of two out RBI knocks and the Indians lead it two to one.
You got to look from the corner, and right now there is some concern in the center of the diamond. Josh Tomlin was uh, in the midst of his warm-up pitches. Something didn't look real good. James Quinlan, the Indians head athletic trainer, out there with Terry Francona. I, I, I like the fact that Josh is smiling, because that would indicate that there's nothing seriously wrong. But Terry will be the judge. And he's going to pull the plug on Tomlin. Well, maybe because it's been 17 days ago since his last outing, yeah, but you certainly hate to see this. Well, well, let's see. I did not see it. I didn't see it, but let's take a look, and uh, I'm sure we can. Okay, this should be one of his last uh, warm-up pitches. It's his leg. Yeah, like he's the got right leg. It's almost like he's got a cramp in there, huh? Yeah, and then he backs off. You know, because he's trying to stretch it. Looks like he's trying there to. There it is, hammy. Yeah. So our Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen will go for Jeff Manship, who comes into the ballgame. Now, Jeff was up. He was already getting loose in the pen. So it won't take him a whole lot of pitches to get loose and get ready. But let's just. All oh, collectively uh, hope that nothing's wrong with uh, seriously wrong with Josh Tomlin, but it looked like that right leg he just kind of stiffened up, cramped up, whatever the case was, and he's going to go get looked at in the Indians' training facility. And we'll be right back here to progress the field with the Indians now in front, two to one. And the new Indians pitcher is right-hander Jeff Manship, making his third appearance on the year, an inning and two-thirds, three walks. Three walks, no strikeouts to this point. He's got David Wright, Michael Conforto, and Joanna Cespedes. Hit hard, deep left field, and it's off the top of the wall. Ramirez makes a good play towards second base. The tag is in time, and they got him. David Wright, he raced, trying to stretch it into a double on a terrific play by Jose Ramirez. The neophyte left fielder made a terrific play off the wall and a good throw to second base. I think Wright thought he had a home run coming out of the batter's box. He never kicked it in gear until about halfway to first base. And the throw from left field by Ramirez right on the money. And boy, that fired up Lindor. It's a nice short hop pick by Kidness, and it had him by plenty. So a really nice play there. I don't think he was really busting it out of the batter's box. I thought he might have thought that was a home run. Down and in on the off.
off speed pitch. Conforto sends that back into the seats. Off the bat, you can see it. No. And he was watched. That's okay. That's not bad. I thought he thought he might have had a home run, but that's just a flat out a good play by yes. Ramirez to get the ball off the wall and throw it in. Gonna be a tough play for Kipnis. Long throw and Napoli holds the bag. Two away. Oh, terrific. And again, this is one of those odd plays that with the ship, you don't get a lot of practice on making this throw if you're Jason Gibbons. No, you do not. He's ranging to his uh, his left and on the move. He's got to spin and make the throw. And Napoli just does keep his toe on the base and able to catch the ball. So a nice play all the way around by both Kipnis and Napoli. So a couple of defensive gems to start the sixth for Cleveland. After they just took a two to one lead and watched Josh Tomlin have to leave the game. With a, a left leg issue. I don't think it was an injury so much as maybe just a cramp. We'll have to wait and see the official word. Lindor throws out Cespedes. And we'll go to the bottom of the sixth with the Indians up one. The bench talking with Jeff Desjardins. That's the last pitch that Josh threw. You can see him kind of kicking that right leg. Yeah, almost kept it stiff. Reaching back there for a hamstring. So, yeah, you don't know. Maybe he felt a little twinge there. Not sure. He's out there. That's a good sign. They're not icing anything. Rajay Davis leading off the home half of the sixth. Tried to bunt. Well, for Harvey, first four innings, he only threw 38 pitches. Last inning in the fifth, he ended up throwing 21, and that started with the walk to Santana and then some two out hitting by Ramirez and Uribe. I told you in his first two starts on the year, he's been very good through the lineup the first two times, and then that third time through the lineup, yeah, hitters are seven for 11 against him, so we'll see if uh, that continues. By the mound. Yes. And it will be an infield hit for the speedy Rajay Davis. 
Yeah, once that ball gets past Harvey, there's no way you're going to get Davis. I don't care if he's 35 or whatever, he can still get down the line very well. And he was leaning for that pitch. You got to jump out of the box. But once it gets past Harvey, you're not going to throw him out. So that was 3.8 seconds to the right side of the plate to get down the first baseline, which is outstanding. And it goes as an infield single. So that's the third hit now for the Indians. And, and Jason Kipnis over two. And a base stealing threat here. Really small lead for Davis. Interesting. Uh, he wants to get a look maybe to see what's going on or he's going to maybe just try and jump off. He looks like right there just on that first pitch about average. He's going to try and get to the spot where he feels comfortable and get a toe hold. Now he's got a little different. There lead. you go. Yeah. yeah, he's out there. Quickly draws a throw. There's the up glove we talked about yesterday. Yeah. Hey, he didn't have it on last night when he was uh, on base. But he's got it here today. As Andre told us yesterday, a little plastic. Protection for the fingers when you're going in head first into second base in that hand. Just a normal batting glove on the right hand. Big lead for Davis. He's going. Here's the throw, not even close. See, that's what I, I love with Kipnis, you know, when you get when you get a little knack going. And you know the guy's going to run. You're going to give him a pitch and let him give him a chance to steal. And Davis now with five stolen bases has only been caught one time, and I think the only time he was caught, he was safe. But he gets the second. You see, he keeps the foot on the base, right behind El Tuve now with five stolen bases. But now nobody on. See if Kipnis can get him over. You get him over, get him in for a little insurance run. Second stolen base today. The Indians now with 10. They've only been caught one time. Santana had one earlier back in the fifth. Hitting a smacks one in the alley in left center field. That'll get down and go to the wall. Davis will score. And Jason Kipnis with his third double of the series gives the Indians a three to one advantage. Really a beautiful job by Kip. Taking a fastball up and away to stay on it and just hit, plug the gap. You know, he figures he's going to try to pull that ball to get him over. Jason Kipnis since his third double in the series, and I mean, threaded the needle in left center field. Davis can trot home. So they trade positions out there in the third time through. Here we go again for Matt Harvey. Indians hitters two for two now. Francisco Lindor 0 for 2 on the day. Trying to bunt fouls it off. Rick, watching Lindor try to bunt there, you know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but 0 for 7 in the series just seems like he's just not comfortable right now. Maybe he feels like I just need to get him over to third base well, with a bunt. As a hitter, anytime. Get him over any way you can. If you don't feel you can pull the ball and swing it, then bunt and get him over. I'm just thinking right now, go ahead. It, it, you're right. It, it's a comfort. He gets it down. All right, good bunt. He got the job done. There's certainly nothing you can say there except good job. Getting this over to third base. 
Let's go down to Andre and uh, talk more about Francisco. Maddie, it's funny you bring up in whether Lindor is comfortable. I asked him earlier, I go, what happened to you last night? And he goes, I had a bad night. And then I started talking to him about watching video as a hitter. And then he goes, I try to stay away from that. He goes, it messes me up. He goes, I don't want to see Matt Harvey punch out 16 guys. He goes, just to tell me what he does and doesn't do. And he said the last night he was so worried about Bartolo throwing a two-seamer that he got locked up on changeup. So I think right now it's the mental approach that he's getting into. But Rick, as I've told you guys, he's not into watching video. He just wants to All look right. at scouting reports and read and go off of that, not see guys carving them up, other hitters. Yeah, everybody is different when it comes to that. You know, they just because they have it don't mean you, you like it. I see what you're saying there with, with Lindor. I want to see visualize. I mean, and you can watch all the video you want. It doesn't translate. The minute you step in that batter's box is when you start putting on your own video. When you watch uh, how he releases the ball and how he's pitching, you just react. Everybody's different. 0 oh, 1 pitch. Napoli bangs it up the middle, beats the shift. And the Indians get another run as Kipnis scampers home from third. Mike Napoli with his fifth RBI on the year. The Indians have played it two more here in the sixth and lead it now four to one. Right there is just doing your job. He broke his bat, but they had the shift on and he got enough of it to get it through. His second straight hit now with runners in scoring position because remember he had one last night that made him one for nine. He's now two for ten. So that's that's beautiful baseball right there. Davis an infield single. He steals second. Uh, Kipnis doubled them home. They bunt him to third. They get him in. There's the insurance runs you really want. And guess what? You're at four now in the ball game. Carlos Santana steps in. It's probably not the first time I've seen it. But it sure looked unusual to see the shift on with the infield in. We see the shift a lot. But to see three infielders shifted on the left side on the cut of the grass like that I'm not sure we see that very often for, for the left side as a right hand yeah. normally you see it with left handers and you'll see three on the right side so it is a strange look but pulled in too like that yeah and they beat him I mean when you look at the shift and the way they're playing it looks like it's a it's top heavy over there on the <laughs> left side and then it's like they're they're right in your uh, in your living room yeah I mean they are they're they're very close to you but as a hitter that's what you love and he didn't have to hit it very hard. The ball still gets through in the outfield because nobody was there. Oh, nice. Great heads up play by Napoli. Absolutely. Napoli saw it hit the dirt and took off immediately. No hesitation. Yep. He was, as you say, anticipating the ball in the dirt and took off. That was a great read from Mike Napoli, anticipating the ball in the dirt. He got it in the dirt. And he had a good jump. And it looked like Darno had a chance at him. But it's the jump. That's what I talk about. You don't have to be fast to be a good base runner. That's a good read. You get yourself 90 feet. Now you're in scoring position. Well done. And you have the lead here, so you can take that chance. Another ball in the dirt. This time, Darno keeps it in front of him. Well, with runners in scoring position, the Indians are a perfect four for four. Of course, they didn't have a runner on base before last inning. Well, the previous two games, they had a tough time they're getting They're taking around. advantage of it. They've done it all. It, it, they're perfect in this game compared to the, the last two. They could, they could barely get them home. Yeah, good eye. Boy, and Harvey Carlos really Santana struggling this, last, this third time through. And Worthen's going to go out for a visit. Well, I don't know what happened, Rick, but they were 0 for their first 14 collectively against Matt Harvey today, and they're 5 for 6 since. Well, that, that, that third time through the lineup, you go back to the fifth, and it was a walk to Santana that got him going, the first base runner. Okay, close pitch. He ended up stealing second base to get himself in scoring position. And then the big two out base hit by Ramirez. Got him on the board. And Uribe follows hitting a low fastball. They took the lead. He was able to strike Naquin out, but you come back, you get a guy on, and they, they haven't uh, made an out since. Really, they sacrificed as the only out that they've made in this inning. 
Here is Jan Gomes, who is 0 for 2 on the day. And he's got a base hit in the right field. Napoli around third. They're going to wave him home. Granderson throw will go to third, and the Indians are up 5 to 1. Jan Gomes with an RBI. That's his fifth run batted in on the year. Yeah, that looks like Harvey is going to be done for this one after the way he started in this game. Gomes shoots him the other way. And I'll tell you, Mike Sarbaugh, the third base coach, being very aggressive with Mike Napoli, but Granderson didn't even throw home. He went to third base. Santana was going to continue and then stopped. You see, he stops to go back, and there's not even a play at home plate. So good job. Put the head down and keep going. Love it. That was a, a clinic in base running there, taking the extra base. Jose Ramirez aggressively after the first pitch fouls it off. Well, I guess they just had to get on the board and everything loosened up because, boy, they look like a different ball club now, don't they? I mean, the first, to the first four innings, the first 13 batters, it was just, it looked easy for Hart. It was easy. And then the walk to Santana, and he hasn't been right since. That's popped and out of play. As you said, Rick, he made 38 pitches through the first four innings. He needed 21 to get through the fifth. Yeah, and I don't right. know how many he's made so far in this inning. But yeah, these last two innings in a bunch. that stretch, it's been a, a rough go for him. This will be his 19th pitch of the inning. That more pitches in the last two innings than the first four combined. And Ramirez yanks one down the line. It's a foul ball. <laughs> Boy, that would have scored a pair. Look at it coming right off back. That, yeah, that hit right off the wall in the corner. Started, it came right back to the infield. It couldn't have missed by much. Yeah, it did. It missed by a lot, but that's well, relative. It's all relative. Yeah. Well, look at the last two innings. That, that shows you. But, you know, 20 pitches in innings, not bad. When you get to that 30, then it's bad. But he still only has one out. And now he should have two. We'll see. This is a, hitting a weird spot. Cabrera with a nice over the shoulder catch. Two down. Yeah, Cabrera going out. He was the only one going to get there. Wind knocking it down, but he makes the play out number two. Juan Uribe will be the batter, and Uribe had the tie-breaking hit in the fifth inning when he drove home Jose Ramirez. Another ball in the dirt. Darno blocks it cleanly. And a strike to the outside edge, one and one. Harvey deals and Uribe pops it up out of play to the right. You know, Rick, this is one of those games where maybe because it's sort of an unusual start time, the fans get sort of used to seven o'clock night games on weekends. Sometimes you get the one o'clock games, but these four o'clock starts are a little unusual. 
it took a while for people to get here today. They were they were filing in throughout the first several innings, but now you look around. Yeah. Almost the entire lower deck, including the bleachers and the middle decks, they're completely filled. Arebe checks. He did not go. Why wouldn't you want to come out on a nice, bright, sunny Saturday? Yeah. National League champs are in town from last year. Boy, it was a really good ball game for the first five. Now the Indians are starting to open it up. 2-2. Two -two. Up high and a full count. And this could be the last pitch of the game for Matt Harvey one way or the other. I would uh, have to agree with you there. will be off with a 3-2 pitch. Oh, he just missed. It's ball four, and they're loaded. Second walk of the inning, and that will be it for the dark night. Terry Collins says good night as he'll go to the bullpen as the Indians will send their ninth batter of the inning to the plate. And when Tyler Naquin digs in, he'll be facing Rafael Montero as Matt Harvey exits to the Mets dugout and eventually to the clubhouse. What a turnaround for the tribe here in the fifth and now sixth innings as they lead it five to one. are still available and include eight different plans. You can buy a prorated 20 game plan and they'll get up to 12 games for free. Just visit Indians.com slash season tickets and you can get more details. Rafael Montero the new pitcher for New York as you take a look at the numbers for this right hander. So far this year well, this will be his first appearance he was just called back from Triple A. Yeah, they needed the help in the bullpen when they started to use their, you know, their closer and some relievers two and three days in a row. They needed some extra help and they had to go to eight men in the bullpen. Tyler Naquin with the bases loaded and two out in the inning. The ninth man to bat for the Indians and he went after that first pitch. Aggressive cut, fouled it back. Two quick strikes. Well, there's good news from the Indians clubhouse, and that's 
With regards to Josh Tomlin, it was a right leg cramp, hamstring, right hamstring oh, cramp. Oh, just a cramp, beautiful. So, kind of like what it, that's what it looked like. When we saw the video, it looked like it tightened up on him, cramped up, and that's exactly what it was. So, hopefully not a lingering problem for Josh. The 0-2. And three pitches gets Montero and the Mets out of the inning. But the Indians really turning the tables on the dark night here this afternoon, and they lead it 5-1. Injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio and buy Ford, built Ford tough. Seventh inning here at Progressive Field. Indians with a 5 to 1 lead now. And Terry Francona with a number of changes will start. With the new pitcher Zach McAllister making his fourth appearance on the year, he's got the five, six, and seven hitters due up for New York. Defensively now, Jose Ramirez moves in to take over at third base from left field. Rajay Davis moves from right field over to left, and the new left fielder, or the new right fielder, is Colin Calgill. Lucas Duda 0 for 2. He has grounded out and he has flied up. Down on strikes. McAllister takes care of him. One away. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. Defensively, the Indians have played well today. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Francisco Lindor with a nice diving stop. Napoli with a backhander took a hit away. And off the wall, Jose Ramirez, his first career assist as an outfielder throughout David Wright. And Jason Kipnis, another odd angled throw with that shift on, and a nice play to retire Michael Conforto in the sixth inning. And a 
called strike to Neil Walker, who is 0 for 2. Walker was the one robbed by Napoli in the second inning. That backhanded play he made at first base. Good off speed pitch. Yeah, McAllister, he threw a couple of good bracket balls when we were down in Tampa to get a couple of outs. Boy, if he could throw that pitch, get me over, you know, just to throw him, prove the hitters he can throw that for a strike, he's going to be awfully tough. That high fastball, that thing looked like it was riding up. And Walker did well just to get a piece yeah, of we, it. We know his fastball's there. It's, it's not short at all. He's got good velocity, but, boy, you prove to those hitters you can throw the off-speed pitch for a strike, you're in business because he's only coming in for an inning anyway. So he can air it out. One, two. And it's popped out of play. center field good day to let him hit it here that way Tyler Naquin makes the catch and there are two down as dribble Cabrera is one out of two tonight two for five in the series Opening the year with nine straight losses, the Minnesota Twins have now posted back-to-back -back come from behind wins over the Angels. Oh, they came back today again, huh? Yeah, they won six to four. A couple of eighth inning home runs. By Osborne, yeah, that's RCM, you, Jung -ho Park. That's what you have to do. I mean, when you get into a streak like that starting out the year, you gotta find a way to shake hands and say, Congratulations, boys. Yeah. You get that first one, it takes a lot of pressure off. Unfortunately. The uh, the twins win came at the expense of one of our old buddies Joe Smith. Oh is that right. Yeah. Well he beat Seth Curry in a pig game so <laughs> doesn't matter. And there's a two out walk to his dribble Cabrera to keep the inning alive for New York. And it'll bring up Travis Darno. Cubs beat the Rockies today 6 2 Reds down the Cardinals 9 8 and the Mariners slip past the Yankees 3 to 2. McAllister pours a fastball over the outside corner. Oakland trying to stop Kansas City's four game win streak A's lead the Royals 4 2 after five in Oakland. Just missed. That's the one pitch that Dan Isonia really has not given pitchers on either side. The low strike has not been there. It wasn't there last night as well. You know, the pitch is down. 
As we thought yeah. some looked yeah, nice. They right. just Dale weren't Scott consistent was, yeah. down there. Well, sometimes it, it travels when you get a, 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 a group of umpires. Oh, that hit him. That is the last thing McAllister wants to do is yeah. give him base runners. No doubt. And he has the walk and now a hit batter. You're at the bottom part of that lineup. You want to be aggressive and go at them and make them hit their way on. Take a look. That ball keeps running in. And, oh, boy, that looked like it was right around the elbow. Ouch. It didn't take him. Those catchers are tough. Well, that arm's got to feel like it's disconnected yeah. from his body No right doubt. That, that cannot feel good. I thought maybe it was a breaking ball, but that, no, that looked like that a straight a, heater. Well, there. he got underneath yeah. that heater, took off, and it just kept running in on him. So now you got uh, the left-hander, Deaza. But yeah, you don't want to give free base runners. Brian Shaw will be getting loose. He'll be next into the fray for the Indians. Will it be in the seventh or will it hopefully be in the not? Hopefully, yeah. McAllister will just put some water on it right now. The Aza cuts and misses. Outside. Well, that's fouled back into the crowd. McAllister now one strike from getting out of the inning, but he wants to call Gomes out for a brief chat. We'll make sure we're on the same page with this one two pitch to Diaz. Same two teams will wrap it up tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. Boy, what a great sports day in downtown Cleveland it will be. Here's the one two. The Indians and Mets will wrap up their series here at 1 o'clock, and then later in the afternoon, the Cavaliers will open the NBA playoffs as they host the Detroit Pistons. Downtown round will one. be hopping, won't yeah, it? Round yeah, round one. Yep. Starting tomorrow, good time of year, spring, the NBA playoffs. Baseball just getting underway. Hockey playoffs. McAllister comes set the one two pitch just missed outside. Well you see anytime you get it close but that's well off the plate. And the two two. To center field. Make one back. He's there and makes the catch. The Mets strand a couple. Stretch time in Cleveland. The Indians on top five to one.
you can stream them on your mobile device. Just go to the App Store, download the free Fox Sports Go app, log in and stream the Indians wherever you go. Bottom of the seventh, and the crowd is having fun today. Beautiful afternoon, lots of sunshine. As long as you're not sitting in one of those seats where the wind is blowing right into your face, it probably feels really nice out there today. But if you're in the shade and you got that breeze blowing on you, not quite as warm. Well, no, it's not quite as warm, but it's a lot warmer than what we started with this year. You're not kidding. I agree with you, but we're getting there. You know, it takes time to get perfection here. As long as we're going to have uh, nice weather for the remainder of this homestand, which looks like we are. Rafael Montero facing Rajay Davis and a first pitch strike. Oh. New catcher behind the dish for New York. And ball bounces in. You know, Darno got nailed by that pitch from Zach McAllister so either he's really smarting or they just want to get him out of there they took a pretty good shot in case they're planning on playing him tomorrow in the finale there's a ball to right field Granderson makes the catch one away yeah now back in that sixth inning the Indians just they jumped on Matt Harvey, really turned the tables on. This was a key at bat. That infield in. Well, th that was a heads up play, too, to get in the scoring position. Gomes would drive him home, but we told you that third time through for Harvey. Coming into it, the hitters were seven for 11 off him, and then two, three. They had four more hits. In that sixth inning, so that third time through the lineup now in all three starts, he's uh, really struggled. Kipnis looks at the pitch low, but they did. The Indians have they did everything right. All the little things, timely hitting, little sacrifice, stolen base, advancing a base on a wild pitch. All the little things were done right. Not a play. This after they didn't have a hit until the fifth inning with two outs. Kip is trying to beat that shift and he goes the other way for a base hit. Oh, he's starting to get that little swing going where he's taking it to left field. He's driving a ball to left center field. His last double, he went that way. Now comes a single. He stayed on the baseball. It was a pretty good pitch away. See where the catcher had to put that hand away. It looked like it might have been off the plate, but he stays on it. Boy, it drills it past Cabrera at shortstop. So, Kipnis now with two hits again today. Five in the series. Francisco Lindor 0 for 2 on the day. The 2 0. Upstairs, three balls, no strikes. Yeah, it, it 
time he finds the zone. It's three and one. You could be aggressive and take off here on a three one count. If Lindor likes it he could go to swing. And if he doesn't give has had a chance to steal a base up four runs. Keep the pressure on. Lindor drives one to right center field and time and he can't get it. It'll go to the wall. Kipnis around second on his way to third. Sarbaugh's going to wave him home. No throw to the plate. He scores standing. Francisco Lindor doubles the right center field, and the Indians are up six to one. Now you get the count in your favor, and Lindor put a really nice swing on this ball and drives it to right center field. Granderson going to try and dive after it, misses it by about a foot. Once it gets by, Kipnis is going to score because he realized he just wanted to make sure he wasn't going to catch it. But when it gets to the wall, come on, Mike Sarbaugh says, keep right on running, baby. That is the sixth run for the Indians. Lindor gets his first hit, gets his fourth RBI. So now they are up to six runs. I know it's just a little thing, and it should be automatic. But I can't tell you how many times I'll look down a home plate and the on deck hitter is not there for the guy coming home. But Mike Napoli was right there to tell Jason Kipnis, yeah, you're up, you're up, you don't have to stop. That's exactly where you should be uh, if you're on deck and, and you, have, you may have a play at the plate. Yeah. The ball gets pitch. away. And down to third goes Francisco Lindor. You know, those are little things day in and day out, Matt, that you have to do. He spikes his slider in front. Well, Lecky gets a, a sort of deflects off him, goes towards the Indians' dugout, and Lindor moves up, and the infield comes in now with one out. So again, here's now look where the second baseman is on this at bat with uh, Napoli up there. Instead of being on the left yeah, side, yeah, right. He's on right where he's supposed to be. So they made a change. Last time yep. up, Napoli was batting in a similar situation. They had three on the left side at the cut of the grass. That's something. Oh, Napoli baby. Bangs it sweet. into right field. Another RBI for the Indians cleanup man. That's, uh, that's really a great job. Now, Napoli, he's loose now. He got that first hit with a runner in scoring position last night, and I'll tell you what, he's doubled up tonight. This one was a bullet. He caught a nice 3 0 pitch with a lot of plate and swung it with authority. So he's swinging it very well right now. He's got a couple RBIs. The Indians have seven on the board. Now they're getting a little confidence. Now Carlos Santana comes up. He's walked twice. And he has scored a run. Andre not down there next to the Indians dugout. They're starting to feel it a little bit, aren't they? A little bit. You guys bring up confidence. But think of this. The tribe had 67 total hits coming into today. 27 of them coming in the last two days. Added nine in. You guys always say hitting is contagious. It starts to look like this offense. Yeah. Maybe picking up and hey, they played in a couple days in a row too, which helps. It sure does. Fair ball to get the out at first and the out at second to end the inning. But a really nice couple of big insurance runs here in the seventh as the Indians open up a six run lead.
by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Seven one, the Indians lead it, and we go to the eighth inning. A new Indians pitcher, and it will be Brian Shaw. Shaw's fourth appearance on the year, as he will face the top of the New York Mets lineup. Yeah, Tomlin ended up going five in this ball game, having to come out in the sixth inning because of a leg cramp. Then it was Manship for one, gave up a hit, zeros across, but McAllister for one. Gave up a walk and hit a batter, but had a strikeout. Now it's Shaw's turn. Pitch up high, ball one. Broke his bat, looked toward left, and it gets down for a hit. Granderson on his way to second base, and he's got himself a broken bat loop double. Couldn't have placed it any better. The hitter for the Mets, number five, well, Josh Tomlin came out, and you know it didn't take him long. He had a pretty good feel. After not pitching in 17 days, he had six strikeouts on a day. He didn't walk anybody. That doesn't surprise us. But then he started to lock in with that good curveball, cutter away. He mixed his fastball up, and really, he threw the ball very well. Especially when you consider Granderson, the leadoff man, took him deep to lead the game off. He settled in nicely, and uh, it was a wake-up call for him. So it was nice to see Josh out there with another good start. Well, remember, Josh Tomlin's the guy that when he was in the minor leagues, Rick, he was pitching in Kinston. He was an A ball. And they had a situation where they needed a starter at AAA. They called him up from Kinston to go to AAA to make a spot start. He went seven innings, gave up a couple of runs. Hey, kid, thanks for your effort. Right back yeah, to A ball. Right. So he's been that guy that's done whatever, whenever. Uh -huh. So even though it was a long layoff, he was the one guy just didn't think it was going to bother him. And even after the home run, he thought, oh, boy. But no, that was no, just a wake up call. Yes, he certainly did. I mean, he, he couldn't wait, and you knew it as well as I did. He was chomping at the bit to to get this started, even though he had to wait. It wasn't his fault. It was the circumstances of the weather and just the way it's set up early in the year when you're the number five starter for any team. But he came in and, and he earned it last year because when he came back to pitch for the Indians, you know, it was after two years of rehabbing. Yeah. And he finally came back and felt healthy. He finally could twist off a curveball and bounce it. He could do just about anything. <laughs> David Wright awaiting the 3-1 pitch. And it's outside, ball four. So the Mets have two on, nobody out. And Brian Shaw will face Michael Conforto. You know, the other day when Brian Shaw pitched and had that kind of disastrous outing in Chicago, it's not like they were knocking balls off the fence. And, and he, he did give up the one home run, but the way the inning started was, you know, base hit, little shot inside the bag at third, and then it just kind of got away from him. And you wonder, Rick, when a guy's had a bad outing like that, even a veteran who's been around. Next time out, you're trying to, and then you, a oh, broken bat. Oh, now here's a guy's got a double on a broken bat, and you just wonder. Well, he started out the year tough last year. That's right. You know, when you're talking about the first month, he had a tough go at it. I mean, he did pitch an inning down in Tampa, had a couple strikeouts, and, and settled down, but. You know, this is a guy that you, he's normally fine. He's nor, give, give him the ball and let's go. It's seven to one, and 
you're expecting everything. But, you know, sometimes guys start out slowly. He may be one of them. And that's one guy that's hoping he does it. He's not going to have any teeth left if he keeps going through that gum the way he's going through it here this you know, afternoon. That's all part of a bullpen. You know, when they get locked in and you, you, everybody expects, okay, you come on, let's go. One, two, three, one, two, three. It doesn't work that way. You've got to work at it. These hitters are going to make you work for it. All right, he, uh, the leadoff. Broken bat, then he walks right. So now he's got to he's got to bear down. Get that double play ball. Out of play. Two and two on Conforto. Well, it's a lot like we saw last night as far as the Indians go in the ninth inning. How it started yeah. snowballing and yeah. snowballing. And you bring in your closer and you give up a hit and you walk a guy and you get another hit. It just, it, a lot of times it doesn't go the way you anticipate it's going to go. And they had to hang on and it looked like they were going to cruise to victory up until the ninth. Wow, Tim Tuffle. I don't know if it was that close, but it was lying right at the Mets third base coach. And he stands. I, I noticed this last night. He stands very close to the line, uh, the third baseline, when the left handed hitter's up so he can talk to that guy that's on second. The 2 2. Out of play. Pulled that foul right side. Way out in front of me. And the 2-2 is swung on and missed. Blew it right by him. First strikeout, first out of the eighth. For Brian Shaw. There you go. He gets one by him right here. There's a the little cutter in there. Or a good fastball. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a cutter or fastball from Shaw. But he gets out number one. And now Yoenis Cespedes. but is still in that DH role after he threw himself into the stands on Wednesday going after a foul ball. Oh boy, that is high and deep and gone. Yoenis Cespedes with a three-run homer. And the Mets aren't done yet. They close the gap to 7-4. The one guy you didn't want to throw a low cutter to get in the plate, but it didn't take long. He shoots it out of here in a three run homer. He had a two run homer last night in the fifth. He gets a three run homer tonight. Watch this inside cutter. Not a good selection there for this guy. Because that ball gets out of here in a hurry. So it's a now a seven to four game with the three runs on the board here. And for Cespedes, his third home run. Shaw giving up his second homer of the year. Now this is a case where in the old days you would say the pitching coach is going out here to stall for a little time to let the bullpen Only get has up and 30 ready. Seconds. But now we have a 30 second clock and that clock is already down to five seconds. So Mickey Calloway will have to exit right about now. As the umpire comes in and says break it up. Cody Allen getting loose in the Indians bullpen. He just now started to throw. And 
And Lucas Duda, 0 for 3 is the batter. Two quick strikes. Did he go? He no. did not. No, he kept it back. Off the plate. And the 20th pitch of the inning for Shaw is popped up. And this will be Jason Kipnis. Two down. Up comes Neil Walker. And the second baseman 0 for 3 here today. And misses. He's Tom. Just outside, one and one. Twenty thousand one hundred and sixty five. The attendance here this afternoon. Just a delightful day. More to follow between these two teams tomorrow. One o'clock start. Yeah, three different start times. We had a seven, four. Tomorrow will be a one. And then an off day Monday with a right. six o'clock game on Tuesday. That's right. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday are six o'clock starts, and then a, a nooner on Thursday, and then it's getaway again. Walker wallops this baby. Deep right field, and goodbye. Second home run allowed by Shaw. Now it's a four run eight for the Mets. They've hit three home runs here in the ballgame. And now it's a seven five game and that's going to be it for Shaw. Terry Francona is going to have to go to his closer Cody Allen for a four out save here this afternoon. Timeout here at Progressive Field. With the Indians clinging to a 7 5 lead.
1230 Eastern only on Fox or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Cody Allen coming on in the eighth inning. Last year he was the king of the multi inning save. He's uh, going to try to nail one down here this afternoon. He's got the number seven hitter is Drupal Cabrera coming up. There are two outs in the inning. Year, Cody Allen had seven saves of more than one inning, which was the best in Major League Baseball. Line drive foul. Well, his dribble has looked uh, pretty good. Pretty good at the plate in, these two, in this two game series to this point. Stayed on the baseball, taking it the other way. He's turned on fastballs. Rips that foul. With a good fastball, one and two. You know, you were talking about Brian Shaw, who got off to a, a slow start a year ago. Cody Allen, yeah, had a tough time getting going out of the gate last year. He told me he looked back on it. He thought part of his problems were too many times he'd get in a tight spot, try to make a perfect, perfect. pitch instead yeah. of just you know, let your defense play behind you. Well, trust your stuff, and you know, yeah, let your defense work. There it is. He gets out of the inning. But the Mets play long ball here in the eighth. They hit a couple of homers and they close it to 7-5. To the game brought to you by Mazda. Keep the Mets in the park. Well, they let off the game with a home run. 
And then they kept him in the yard until the eighth inning when Brian Shaw served up a pair of ding dongs. And the Indians got the hits going with runners in scoring position. Yeah, they started out perfect, four for four today, but six for eight. That's outstanding. Timely hitting. We'll see if they can add a couple of more. The Mets want to continue to hit home runs and come try and come back into this game. Jim Henderson on for the sixth time. 0 and 1 with a 270 ERA in his three and a third innings, seven strikeouts. Coming on, he's going to face Gomes Ramirez. And let's see who went into your Cowgill. spot. Cowgill, gotcha. Well, how big are those insurance runs they added in the seventh now? Well, you got to continue That's to add on in this game. That's why they're calling insurance runs. Gomes drove in a run in the sixth. This guy got off to a great start this year. Struck out seven of the first nine you face. And unlike so many pitchers that have had the Tommy John surgery, he came back from shoulder surgery. That's even tougher. Yeah. I mean, he was kind of quickly becoming a top notch guy for the Milwaukee Brewers. He pitched in 61 games back in 2013 at a 2.70 ERA at 28 saves. And then. The shoulder started to go. Needed surgery. Yeah, did the Mets take a flyer on him and sign him when he had to rehab? Yep, pretty much. High pop. One away. It's not that Jim Henderson is a gray beard by any stretch, but. At 33 years old, he was drafted by the Montreal Expos. And then he was Rule 5 by the Cubs a few years later. And then a few years later, that after that, he was released by the Cubs. And Milwaukee signed him as a minor league free agent in 09. He had never pitched a day in the big leagues. And he wouldn't again for three more years. That's when he finally broke through with the Brewers. And then, as I said, the Mets signed him as a minor league free agent December of last year. Actually, that was just this just this past December. Okay. Yeah. 16 or yeah. 15. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Play left side. Yeah. 
Jose Ramirez drove in a run with a double and scored back in the fifth. One for three on the afternoon. Liner to short caught by his dribble Cabrera two away. And Colin Cowgill to the play one for two on the day was Juan Uribe and after Uribe walked in the sixth inning that's when Cowgill went in as a pinch runner. Well that's what uh, Terry starting to do defensively when you start Ramirez in left field or he gets a start off. You have a lead going in. And Naquin was in the ball game. You keep him in, and you got to take out Ramirez. But now today they move Ramirez instead of taking him out of the game to third base. It took your rebay out. Calgill with a smash to short, and this dribble Cabrera was trying to go with a jump throw to first base, but lost the handle. And yeah, be an infield single. For you know Calgill. what? Cabrera ha had the time. I think he just tried to rush it a little bit too much. He got there and he was going to try and throw it before he really had a grip on it. He realized it. He's a little upset with himself there. He got there. He had to plant and throw, even though Cowgill can get down the line pretty well. And the transfer just never got a grip on it. So it'll go as a base hit. Tyler Naquin will come to the plate 0 for 3 on the day. Talking with Tim Belcher before the ball game, former Indians pitching coach and, uh, of course, special assistant in the front office. He's filling in on the radio side today for Jim Rosenhaus. But Tyler Naquin was walking by and Belch said, Did you hurt that wall last night or did it hurt you? Yeah. <laughs> and I was really impressed by the way Naquin responded. He said, Hey, Belch, you know what? He goes, I'll run through that wall if I have to make a catch. And he didn't say it with any cockiness or arrogance. It was just as a just a real matter of fact. That's just the kind of player he wants to be. Man, if I have to run through the wall, then I'll run through the wall if I have to. He'll learn. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to tell you that. You'll learn to stay away from it. Because eventually, you know, you see him go in there pretty hard. You learn the ballparks when you get to the big leagues, and I know they have padding on the fences and everything, but uh, you learn to shy away from them because you you can't win that battle. Now you're going to be more valuable to your team out on the field, not uh, on the disabled list. So you try and stay away from the walls, but I know the mentality that he's thinking. Naquin smokes it in the right field. Calgill off to the races, and he'll stop at third. The Indians at the corners with two down now. Well, he got a pitch to his liking. He gets his first hit of the afternoon. He just dropped the barrel head of that bat down on the baseball down in a typical left-hander. And I mean hit a BB. Gets it past Walker at second base. So a pair of two-out singles now for the tribe. That gives him 11 knocks on the day. Double digits again. They had 14 last night. 11 this afternoon. Why not? You got two outs. Try and add on. Increase that seven to five lead. Your comment about Naquin reminds me of something Terry Collins said, though, just the other day about Joanna Cespedes, who tried to jump into the stands yeah. and catch a foul ball. Wow, that's a close shave right there. Yes, it is. Davis did well to get out of the way. That was up and in. Boy, was it ever. I mean, that's uh oh, yeah. I guess it wasn't as I thought it was closer to his face. Well, Almost unbuttoned his shirt jersey. You're dry, the, diving into it. It is very close. <laughs> anyway, Terry Collins said he talked to Yoannis Yoannis Cespedes and told him 
hey, you know, I know I, I love the effort, but we need you on the field. Right. I can't have you diving into the stands for a foul ball. Yeah. And Check this swing. That's going to stay fair. And he gets the tag on him to end the inning. Couple of hits, couple stranded. We go to the ninth. Indians leading it seven to five. Seven to five. The tribe have the lead. Jensen, this one a lot closer than we thought that we would have it here in the ninth. Inning. Yeah, Cody Allen, got to be careful now because it is a two-run game. You got to make sure you get that first guy out. Don't want to have to be worried about guys rolling around out there with the top of the order coming. Join us for Indians Live when this one wraps up. Brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Right now, back upstairs to Matt and Rick. All right, thanks, guys. Cody Allen will go to work. Travis Darno, Alejandro Diaz. Actually, uh, Darno is out of the ball game. Is this Ploiecki? Ploiecki yeah. will bet. I guess he'd almost have to unless they're carrying a third catcher. That's almost unheard of these days. So Kevin Ploiecki, who was a first-round pick a few years ago out of Purdue. Lucky Deaza and Granderson in the ninth for New York. And a foul right back. Nice great yeah. breaking ball dropped in for a strike. Nice hook right there. <laughs> Cody looking for a four out save. A little bit low. What did he have six or seven of those last seven. year? Seven. Yeah, last seven year. of them last year, right. But Best in the majors. Yes, indeed. By the way, Travis Darno, a left elbow contusion. The X-rays were negative, so that's good news for the Mets. Oh, baby, that was too close to take, and I'm really surprised he didn't bring him up here. Man, well, it's awfully close. Well, you got to go at him now, make him hit his way on. That's low, and he walks the leadoff man. Take a look at this pitch. This is going to get. Well, they wanted it inside, and you see Gomes is going to give him a good target for the plate, and that one didn't miss by much either, but. It's ball four, so they get their leadoff man aboard, and now the tying run comes to the plate. 
Alejandro Deaza. 0 for 3 today. There's a strike call. Deaza has seen 12 pitches today, 10 of them strikes. Set and ready to go. Let's see. I mean, normally the umpires will not give it to the hitter. I can't see him, and there it is. Oh, oh man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's in. He's. Yeah. Normally, umpires won't give it to you then. Oh, beautiful off-speed pitch. But again, he's been here before. Last time, he he couldn't get the umpire to raise his right hand. Popped him up. And Lindor calls for it. One away. Let's look at the sequence here. You're going to get a fastball for a strike. He wasn't going to mess around. Now you're going to see the curveball and a dandy come right back with a high fastball. So, Took him off the fastball with a breaking ball, popped him up with the fastball, and he gets the first out. Now Curtis Granderson. Let off the game of the home run. Yes, Chased he did. It down and in. Granderson had four hits in his first 36 at bats. He's got two hits in the ball game today. See, normally Granderson not a guy that gets aggressive early because you know he doesn't swing at the first pitch but he had him cheating right there thinking maybe I got to get after that fastball and try and tie this game couldn't hold up and now he's down in the count. Came back with it and Granderson lays off one and one. To bid in. Two and one. <laughs> Cody Allen on course a two one pitch. Yeah, that's a called strike to even the count at 92 miles an hour. Pitch a little higher, he gets the call. Hits it into the teeth of the shift. Kipnis goes to second. They get the forts there with Jose Ramirez taking the throw. So that put out will go four to five. Granderson aboard on the fielder's choice and with two outs. The tying run will still be at the plate in the form of David Wright. But now no shift. The Indians will go to a more of a traditional defensive alignment. It's crowd of better than 20,000 up on its feet.
David Wright. One out of three. Walked and scored in the eighth. Granderson at first base still runs well, but his run doesn't matter. It's right at the plate. Yeah, absolutely. It's the one that really counts. Yeah, playing deep in the outfield, you got to keep that runner off second base. Back out of play, it's two and one. Yeah, you knew Wright was going to have a swing. You get the count in your favor, two and zero. Oh. He was looking for the fastball and fouled it off. Allen's 2 1 pitch. Hit right at Lindor. He'll go to Kittness, and the game is over. The Indians hold on to win it by a final score of 7 to 5, and even the series at a game apiece. Winning pitcher is Josh Tomlin. Who wins his first start of the year, even though it was just a five inning affair, he had to leave due to a right cramp in his hamstring. Cody Allen notches the save, and that gives him three already on the year. Losing pitcher is Matt Harvey. He is now 0 3 to start the year. With the win, the Indians go to 5 and 4. New York falls to 4 and 6. Time now for our Pat O'Brien play of the game as we go to the seventh inning. Yeah, Lindor, he's uh, going to get it going. It's that double drives in Jason Kipnis. An RBI double, and then Mike Napoli's going to add on with a nice job of getting him in. His second straight hit with a runner in scoring position. A couple of add on runs in that seventh inning, and that's a difference in the ball game. So, a nice job offensively. Actually, all around, I think, by the Indians' offense, they came back, didn't have a hit until the two outs in the fifth inning, and then after that, they were able to put seven on the board, so a really good afternoon for that. Yeah, it was like a tale of two games. Yes, it was, and I mean, they did all the little things right. They took the extra base when they had to. They sacrificed. They got some key hits with runners in scoring position, so it was a good game for them. Really, it was on its way to being a blowout win until Brian Shaw had some trouble there in the eighth inning. But the Indians able to slam the door and win it 7-5. We'll be back with some final thoughts from Progressive Field right after this.